Hi, I'm Tom Brookshire. And I'm Pat Summerall. With just three Sundays left in the NFL's regular season, no one team or player seems to be monopolizing the headlines the way the Dolphins as a team and O.J. Simpson individually did last year. So, Tom, what team and player do you think will wind up with the glory this year? Well, the Oakland Raiders might be the most solid-looking team, even though they lost last week, and Stabler's had a great uh, year at quarterback. But I think maybe Chuck Foreman, a, a very versatile back for the Minnesota Vikings, could be perhaps the individual if you have to do it that way. Got a lot of touchdowns. Jim Hart, I suppose, and Terry Metcalf would, sure. would deserve some consideration, too, wouldn't you think? Yeah, and Cincinnati's uh, Kenny Anderson, I think, or Isaac Curtis are individuals that certainly have had great days. Uh, Miami still has Greasy and the coach is Don Shula, though. There's still some big people around. And there's consideration there, too. That's right. We'll be right back with This Week in the NFL after this message. Well, since last season, when the New York Giants moved their home game to the Yale Bowl, they've only one victory in 11 games they've played there. And that was over the St. Louis Cardinals last year. This year's Cardinals are a different-looking team than last year's, but the Giants still haven't found a way to win in their New Haven home away from home. The first time the Giants had the ball last week, they might have foreseen the kind of day that was in store. Despite his unusual technique, Dave Jennings managed only a 31-yard average on four punts. And on top of that, there was still operating room for number 21, Terry Metcalf. The second time New York had the ball, taking advantage of solid protection from his offensive line, Craig Morton tried to surprise the Cardinals with a first down pass. Number 43, Norm Thompson's return, had St. Louis in good position again. And Jim Bakken was called in for his second field goal and a 6 to nothing lead at the end of the first quarter. After loosening up his arms and fingers, the new giant hero, former Dallas quarterback Craig Morton, finally completed a successful drive with just 21 seconds left in the first half. Ron Johnson, recently returned from an ankle injury, did the honors for New York. Johnson's touchdown gave New York the lead, 7-6 to six at the half, and as has become the custom with the new Giants, after helping set up a score, the number one draft choice from Ohio State, guard John Hicks, number 74, congratulated the scorer in the end zone. In the third quarter, Craig Morton built the New York lead to 14-6 with a strong pump fake and then a perfect spiral to tight end Bob Tucker in the end zone. On the next series, Jim Hart scrambled out of trouble long enough to find a new St. Louis favorite. Wide receiver Earl Thomas, number 82. Thomas' touchdown brought the Cardinals within one at 14-13. And then in the final five minutes came the patented St. Louis Cardinal long-range explosion. This time from Jim Hart to Mel Gray. In all, Hart completed 25 passes, five of them to Mel Gray. And St. Louis led 20 to 14, but the Giants were not dead yet. With a minute and a half left, Craig Morton found Walker Gillette alone in the end zone, and the Giants led once more, 21-20. For well, the fourth week in a row, it looked as though the Giants would win a close one in the final minutes. But for the third week in a row, the magic was only a mirage. This time, with just three seconds left, Jim Bakken supplied another thrilling finish for the Cardinals and another disheartening loss for the Giants. 
St. Louis had nine wins, the most in the NFL, along with Oakland. But as they say, it was a fight to the finish. Pat, before last Sunday's game, the Eagles were the unfortunate owners of a five-game losing streak. And at one time, they appeared to be playoff bound, but it looks like wait till next year for the Birds, huh? It's unfortunate, but true, Tom. And chances of halting that five-game Philadelphia skid weren't the best last week as they traveled to Washington to battle the playoff-hungry Redskins. The Washington Redskins have been rounding into playoff form. And one primary reason is the presence of a hard-hitting, aggressive defense. Early last Sunday, though, the Redskins watched as the Eagles demonstrated some aggressive defensive tactics of their own. The Eagle defense held tight until Redskins signal caller Billy Kilmer began to probe the Philly secondary. Redskin kicker Mark Mosley salvaged two drives with medium range field goals as Washington jumped in front six to nothing. In the final minutes of the first half, Kilmer turned to number 80 Roy Jefferson, whose quick outs maneuvered Washington goalward. After Jefferson out quick the Eagles, Kilmer went to his tight end Jerry Smith for the game's first touchdown. At halftime, the Redskins led 13 to nothing. But in the third period, the Eagle offense arose from a first half slumber. And aired by Roman Gabriel to Charlie Young completions, the Eagles took wing. Gabe finished the drive with a point-piercing arrow to Harold Carmichael, slashing the Redskin lead to six points. The momentum had suddenly shifted in favor of the visitors, but when Tom Dempsey kicked off to number 21 Larry Jones, the comeback fire was extinguished, and the sixth Eagle defeat in a row was very close at hand. Number 21, Larry Jones, is one of only three rookies on the entire Washington squad, and his 102-yard kickoff return silenced the Eagles. In the fourth period, however, Gabriel did again manage to move his club. But the movement was short and inconsistent, and an interception by Redskins safety Kenny Houston, number 27, quelled the Eagle offense for good. Houston's theft led to a short Redskin touchdown, bringing the final tally to a convincing 26-7 victory in favor of the boys from the District of Columbia. Although the Dallas-Houston game was billed as the Battle of Texas, much more was at stake for both teams as the resurgent Oilers fought for their fifth win in a row.